Now in this video, we are going to take a look at doing some beveled text using 3D and Photoshop. Now the beauty of course is that you can actually do true beveling. Unlike layer styles in Photoshop where you just go and you kind of create a bevel and emboss effect, but you do it in a two dimensional way. It's really kind of creating the illusion of beveled text. Here with 3D and Photoshop, you now have the capability of actually creating a three-dimensional bevel on text. Even if it's gonna be a two-dimensional design in the end, you can still utilize 3D to create the effect. So we're gonna start, we're actually uh, gonna be doing the type effect from the movie Thor, and I actually found a font that was pretty close to the actual one used in the film. So it's nice and bold when you're doing text like this, you wanna make sure that you're using a nice thick font. You don't wanna use really, really thin fonts because the beveling will tend to crowd up and, and just really not look right. So make sure you got a nice, thick, bold font, and we're gonna go ahead and go to 3D, and go down here and choose New 3D Extrusion from Selected Layer. Now it's gonna go ahead and extrude the text. By default, it does it at a certain uh, distance based on the file size, and if I just go and grab the current view tool here in the 3D panel, and you wanna make sure you have the 3D panel and the properties panel visible, because they work in conjunction with each other. So if I have current view selected in the 3D panel, I can click in here and move around and see the text in its three-dimensional form all around. You'll notice there is an invisible ground plane, which the shadow will be cast on. And now in this case, we're not necessarily worried about the shadow, where we're just worried about the text. Now I'm gonna select the item itself, and you'll notice it selects the text item here in the 3D panel. Now I'm gonna jump over to the properties panel, and you'll see we have the extrusion depth here, which is at set currently set to 716. I'm actually gonna highlight that and bring it down to a low number right around 25. I don't necessarily wanna concentrate on the thickness, but rather we're going after the bevel effect here. So with the um, main Thor item still selected here in the 3D panel, we're gonna go in the properties panel and we are by default in the first tab section, which is the mesh section right here. I'm just gonna move over two spots over to the cap section and click on that. And here's where you can actually apply the bevel and even inflation properties to this mesh. Now I'm gonna go over here into the bevel width and just bump this up to 25. Now you'll notice it goes ahead and puts that bevel on the text like you're used to seeing. And if I go and rotate this around, you can see we, it truly is a beveled edge. So we're actually having a real dimensional beveled text there but I wanna take it a step further. I'm gonna um, go back into that cap section. And you'll notice we have this little contour button or icon, similar to the contour editor you would see in the bevel and boss layer styles elsewhere in Photoshop. I'm just gonna go ahead and click on that. And it's gonna open up the contour editor and allows you to basically redefine that edge contour, the shape of it by um, this grid here and this line. Uh, as, as if you're looking at it as a profile. I'm actually gonna bring this the other end down here. Notice what it's done to the bevel. It's actually given it that curved edge there. But I want it to be a straight edge, so I'm actually gonna bring this point down here and then click on corner, and then I'm gonna add another point here and click on corner as well, so it's a nice sharp edge. And we'll move this right about here, and looks pretty good. Click OK, and there you can see we've redefined the beveling, so it's more of a edge. It's got like a squared edge on it rather than just a sloping angle there. So it's getting a little bit more def uh, definition to it. So now let's go ahead and apply some surface properties to finish the overall look. Now let's continue on the bevel. Notice here in the 3D panel, you've got the main Thor item, but you can go down and select the front inflation and the extrusion, which are the sides. And then of course the front and back bevel, which is what we want. We wanna go ahead and edit the Thor bevel front here, as you can see right there. Now, the first thing is I'm gonna jump over here to the properties panel and change the diffuse color, which currently is gray. I'm actually gonna change that to black because it reflects things better when they're flat black. Down here, further down, I'm gonna set the shine to a good high amount, right around 75, and we'll see a reflection at around the same thing. We can always edit this uh, later on if we want. Now over here in the environment section, down here toward the bottom, we're going to go in and just choose load texture on the little menu here. And I'm gonna go ahead and locate a texture that I wanna use, which is in fact this kind of generic chrome texture that you see right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that and click open, and it goes ahead and applies it to the text. Now if I go ahead and turn the background back on, 
and grab the text. Let's actually move the, the camera. And I move it around, you'll notice what's happening to that beveling. It's reflecting that file. And as I move it around in the three-dimensional space, it is reflecting it as if it was text in a three-dimensional environment, reflecting the environment around it. Pretty cool. Now, I'm going to go jump back over to that bevel material, back into the environment, and choose Edit Texture, because I want to give it a color. So I'm actually going to go into that file and add a Hue Saturation Adjustment Layer. And then we'll check on Colorize here in the Properties panel, and we'll just make it a really cool gold color. It's kind of like a gold metallic look. And we're going to close that, save the changes, and there you can see there is our gold metallic edge of our text there. Now, looks really good, and you could certainly leave it this way, um, the beveling at least, um, but I'm going to add something to, add to kind of rough it up a little bit. I want it to look like it's got some damage um, going along that beveled edge there. So I'm going to go back over to the Properties panel with the Thor bevel or front bevel material selected. And over here, we're going to go to the bump section. Now, I'm going to go ahead and just make this the same size as my working document. I'm going to just do a um, little trick here is just select the background layer, do a Command A, and then Command C. It um, copies the background layer to the clipboard. And when you jump over here to a property, so I'll go to the bump section, choose new, new texture. It's going to remember the dimensions of the document that's in the clipboard, which is the same as our original file. So we'll go ahead and click OK, and then we'll jump back in there and choose Edit Texture. Now I'm going to go ahead and give this a base fill of 50% gray, and you'll notice we can see the text wireframe inside of this mesh file, and that is because of this setting over here in the Properties panel, where right down here at the bottom you see it says UV Overlays. You can turn that on and off. It just helps you place certain uh, textures or elements so you know they're going to show up in the right place on your 3D layer. Now, what I want to use in this case is actually a different file. I'm actually going to close that because I'm going to apply it directly to the file. In this case, I have this stock image of these cracks that I'm going to use um, as a bump map. So back in that bump section, instead of just doing any texture, I'm actually going to choose Replace Texture. And we're going to add another texture the other way in just a moment. So uh, back on that desktop, we're going to go locate that image with the cracks. There we go. Click Open. And you can see it gives me some wear on that text. If I do a quick render, you can see those different cracks are just kind of showing up and give me a little bit of wear um, on that gold metallic text there, as you can see right there. Pretty cool. All right, now let's take a look at the front face of our text, which is this plain gray face right now, but we're going to change it up. So this time we're going to again select or not again, but this time select the Thor front inflation material here in the 3D panel, and then jump over to the properties panel, and we're going to look at uh, first in, uh, increasing the shine and reflection, just like we did on the other one, but um, we're also going to go in and add another bump map to this one as well. Same thing as before, I'm going to go ahead and keep this the dimensions, and then we're going to go to edit texture. And this is where we're going to add some other elements here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that 50% gray fill on here. There's our text. Now, we're going to introduce another graphic. I have here this kind of cool swirly graphic. It's a simple stock image of a swirly graphic. I'm actually going to go and, and size it down a little bit. It's a little large. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and extract it. Now, a quick and easy way to extract an element like this that's a black graphic on a white background is by simply just going into the Channels palette, Command clicking on the layer, and it will load all of the white area, the highlights, as an active selection. And just simply go to Select Inverse, and then we'll go ahead and just create a new layer and fill it with black, and the graphic is nicely extracted. So we're going to go ahead and take this and drag and drop it over to that bump file, and let's go ahead and scale it in, because it is a bit large. There we go. So we're going to scale it. And remember that trick. When you place something and your control handles are outside <coughs> the canvas area, simply press Command or Control T to put it in free transform, and then press Command Zero, and that will expand the document. Um, allowing you to see the transform handles now. Now notice what I did. I scaled this down and I'm positioning it right where the letters are using that UV overlay as a guide. Now I'm going to hold down the Option key and just simply click and drag down a duplicate 
of that very graphic. I'm going to do this all over the place, making sure I'm not overlapping too many times. And pro ordinarily, I probably would just kind of like rotate the graphic, but since it's only appearing in certain parts of the text, I'm really not going to worry about it too much because it's really going to look rather random anyway. So just kind of, you can see where I kind of just randomly placed, um, well, not really random, but just kind of placed them in the areas of the letters there. When I save the document and jump back over here, you can see what's going on with the text. It's giving me this kind of cool um, beveled look to it. So go ahead and close that, save the changes. And let's go ahead and make that a little bit darker diffuse color. There we go for that front face. Again, in that diffuse swatch, we're just making that uh, face a little bit darker. And then I'm going to jump over to the lights section here in the 3D panel. And you'll, by default, we have an infinite light uh, applied to this text. So I'm simply going to go over to the properties panel and change it from an infinite light to a point light. And then it's going to appear, and a small icon will, will appear letting you know which direction off view it is um, resting. And in this case, it's just above. So I'm actually going to use my 3D slide tool and click and drag down and bring it down into view. You can see the light changing on the object itself. As, as I bring it down, you can see there's the wireframe for the light. And notice how the light interacts with the object as I move it around like this. There we go. And then I can just do another render. Just simply press Shift Option Command R and then see what we get. I can see that the text is looking pretty good. The light's looking pretty good. I would probably want to tweak a little bit of that reflection. And so just move that around. You can notice I can just move the object around and how the light interacts with the object. So we're getting truly beveled text and we're having the control over the various surfaces so that we can get much more realistic lighting and even realistic bump effects to um, really get a depth with texture and different things like that. But uh, just want another way to look at 3D in Photoshop as, a, as, just, as if you would a layer style, being able to bring dimension to text using bevel and emboss and drop shadows with layer styles, now you can take it to that next level by applying actual bevels and shadows using 3D environment, lighting, and textures all right here inside Photoshop CC.